Welcome to Vindal's concept of mass physics. But remember today, we don't want to waste much time. This is NECO 2023 physics particle guide, optics, or sometimes we call it light. So the apparatus they gave us is a rectangular glass block. This is the rectangular glass block. So, and this is the diagram. This is the rectangular glass block. So, four optical pins, just pins, you know. Then drawing board, this is the drawing board. Then papers. These are the papers. Drawing paper, this is our drawing paper, just A4 paper. You can use any paper, you can improvise. That's very fine. Like I said, optical pins. These are the optical pins. So, these are the pins I'm talking about. Then you have, you need a protractor. Protractor, this one. And then ruler, 30 cm ruler. I can use this one, it's okay. And then four drawing pins. You know, I can remove, I may not use these drawing pins. I may use cello tape or paper tape to use this one, okay? So we can just improvise, there is nothing special. But the major thing you need is that you have your rectangular block prism. You need your protractor, you need your ruler. You may not even need this board, provided you have a place you can, you can use this pin and pierce through your paper. You are, you're okay. You can even use a carton if you don't have a drawing board. So these are ways you can do it. So this is the diagram we are going to follow up. When you place this optical, um, this rectangular block, place it like this and dress it. I'm going to show you how to do it when we go to the lab. So this angle is the glancing angle. You can also find this angle, which is called the incident. How do you know the difference between glancing angle and incident? It's very simple. With this line, this line is called incident ray. Then the incident ray with the block is called glancing. But incident ray with the normal, with this normal, is called incident angle. So this is the incident angle. Then this is the refracted angle with the normal, refracted angle. This is the refracted ray. Then this is the incident ray, the way it should have gone. So from the incident ray, I mean from the refracted ray to the incident ray, the distance is called the lateral displacement. And that is what you are going to find. So they say we should find this theta for 20, 65, 55, 45, 35, and 25. Remember, if this is 65, what would this place be? Because this is going to be 90 minus 65. This is going to be 25. So if this place is 55, you know that this is going to be um, 30. So that is how we are going to measure all of them. But the case is, for every corresponding angle you measure, you have to measure the incident I. So I have to write this place I for you to know that that is the angle for this and the corresponding D, lateral displacement. You say tablet your reading. How will our reading be? Our reading is going to be, I'm going to have theta in degree. Everywhere problem. Then I'm going to have I, which is the incident angle. Then I'm going to record D in CM. You must write the unit of measurement. This one must be in degree. This is in degree. And this D is in CM. That is why I'm writing the CM. So this is how we are going to take. So let's go to the lab and carry out an experiment. Okay, let's go on with our experiment um, based on what I was explaining on the theoretical aspect. We're going to carry it out here on the practical aspect. But the issue is that this is the tracing paper. This is the rectangular block. This is my protractor. And I also have a meter rule. I have a pencil. That is my meter rule, which I'm using. I have my, both my blue pen and red pen. I just want to use this pen to 
to explain it better so that you will be able to understand. But in the exam, you are not expected to use pen to use it. Now, this is my paper. Remember, there are some things I did not say in the theoretical explanation, but I will do all of them here. So that is my solotype. I'm going to use it to hold my paper. The area where they say we should use drawing pins, I can use this solotype in place of the drawing pins to just to make sure that my paper is fixed or fastened very hard on the board. And there are other things I did not explain like the use of optical pins i did not explain them but we are going to do them here just be patient as i walk you through this experiment it's very interesting now i put my rectangular block on the paper i am going to trace the outline that is one of the things i was supposed to write on the instruction trace the outline of the rectangular block prism or rectangular glass prism or rectangular glass block, anyone. So I'm tracing the outline. Remember, I'm using my pen, not because you use the pen, but the pen will be visible so that if you're watching the video, you'll be able to have a full experience. I'm going to complete the, the drawing so that I will not have um, a line that is not straight. I want to have a straight line. So that is why I'm completing it. So that I don't, I don't have to cuff my hand if I want to draw the edges or the vertex of the, of the rectangle. Okay, that is my rectangular block. I'm going to label them A, B, C, D. This is A, B, C, and D, okay? Then I'm going to use my protractor to measure a normal. That normal means I'm going to 90. This is my protractor. And remember what I did before in my last experiment on triangular prism. You can still go and watch it for better. I will just make any mark on the rectangular block so that my protractor, the that major point on my protractor can coincide. This point now will match that point I made on line AB and the other one will match the line AB, this particular line AB now. So let's see how it goes. So use that particular point, let it coincide and eh, that cross part and then make sure that the line drawn on the protractor will match with AB. Now make out your angle 90 at that point. Make that point correctly and visibly. Good, and then join the line from the point to the mark you made on the line AB. And draw it straight. That becomes your angle 90 degree. Let me use red. That is my angle 90 degree. Good. That sign represents 90 degree for you to know. Okay, now, now we've measured angle, angle, angle 90. The size you measure theta is 65. So I will still place my angle. My protractor must be placed very carefully. This is where you fell or win. Good at this point, no, uh -huh. everything is coincided. The straight line has matched with <clears throat> continue. The straight line has matched with AB. Why this point has matched with angle 90? Let me make it better. Good, I will mark out 65, but I'm going to start from here to measure 65. So this is my 65. This is 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. 65 is here. 
So I'm going to join my line. But remember when I'm joining line, I have to extend it. First, they make dotted lines. That's the way it is in the wire. Oh, that's the way it is in the question I'm using. So you must make that. All right? The next thing you have to do is place your pins. So it was not captured in the question, but it's normal. I didn't want to stress you. I am placing my pin P1 I am placing P2 remember this one is 65 degrees so what should I do I will replace my block I will do all those things don't worry Thank you. Then I will replace my block. You are, in the, you are entered here. I will replace my block. Then go to this side, DC, and view. Uh, pause it. This is how you are going to view it. From the DC, bend down. Look inside this place. You are seeing, if, you, if you look very well, you are seeing the two pins, P1 and P2. Trace your own and put your P3, P4. Uh, there is, I don't think if there is any way I will even help you to see this, but then we'll try our best. So I'm going to place my P3 and P4. So I'm going to look through it. Now let's look through this. If you look at this, you'll be seeing the two pins inside there. This is the other pins are placed. Hmm? Are you done? So I'm removing this block. Call this one P2. And call this one P1. Call this one P3. P4. Then the first thing I will do is to join these two points. That is where some students make mistake. The student will first draw this angle. No. It is this one that determines where your re refracted ray will come from. So I'm going to draw this is my this is called emergent ray. Remember I must put arrow to show it's light. Light part of light. So the next thing I'm going to do is to join from here to this place. That is the next thing to do. All right. So this is called the refracted ray. Now, what should I do? I am to measure from here to this place. So I'm using my remember you, how you should do it to get the, 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 the distance. This is zero point eight. Therefore, D is zero point eight cm, and I is going to be. 25 degrees. Therefore, according to my table of value, theta in degree, I in degree, then D in centimeter. So this is 65.00. I is going to be 25.00. And D is 0 0.80. So this is what you are going to do for the rest of the experiment, you measure another one, which is 55, measure 45, measure 35, and then tablet your experiment. Thank you. Let's go to the graph.